Hello everyone, my name is Beric. I am one of the lead engineers and one of the co-founders of the Redstone Development Foundation. And... Hello, I'm Blue Dragon Dow, another co-founder and engineer of Redstone Thingies. <laughs> Today we get to show you Blue's creation, Gizmo. You might have seen this in such places as our logo and on the World's Wanted website for most unusual contraption. If you notice, it has three major parts. This odd grid of 16 lights is the output grid. This shows the state of the entire memory bank in one fade swoop. Then over here, this is the tier select array. Two buttons and two, excuse me, two switches and a button. These select which bank the input goes to. Since there are four banks, this is in two binary bits. And then over here, we have the actual data in bay. This can hold up to a 2 to the 4th binary figure, and it's stored by this time button. So let us say that we want to store a number. Beric, a number, if you would please. All right. Let's That's see. How about... Less than 32. Whoops. would help if I actually had a proper tool out. Let's go with... What the... All right. You're very talented at that, aren't you? Apparently I am. <laughs> All right, so we got a four and a one. All right, you have stored five. And which bank do you want to store it in? Let's store it in uh, bank number three. Ah, but do you mean bank number three as in the third one, or do you mean bank number three as in the binary address three? Because you must remember, in binary, you always start counting from zero. Let's go with binary address three, which would be bank four. Correct. So we have the bank selector. 2 and 1 is 3, so positive 2 and positive on 1. Therefore, we have bank 3 selected. So now, if I push the store button, it will register your 5 entered, and it will appear up there. So I am pushing now. A little bit of a delay, and it pops up. Ta-da! All right. Well, let's see what happens when we set a different one. All right. Give it a shot. Okay. Instead of five, let's go with ten. Because I like pretty patterns on the display. All right, then. And you also want to store it in the same bank or someplace else? Well, if we store it in the same bank, then we have to reset the bank. But if we store right. it in the next bank down, which is bank two, then we'll have a nice pretty pattern, just like I like. All right, so I will get rid of bank selector one switch, so it is stuck in bank two. And then, simply by pushing the button again, it pops up. Yay, pretty lights. Excellent. Now, if we want to complete the pattern, we would have to put the same thing in the bottom row, and then we can fill in bank one. So if we set this to nil, the bottommost row will be selected. Mm -hmm. And then push the E button. It pops up. Excellent. Now you had five for the top, I believe? Yes. So I right. shall set I... us the inputs. Most excellent. And I shall set us the bank selection. And it is set up. So if I push the store, oof, we have a lovely pattern. Excellent, go us. Yay. Now that's all well and good, but what if we want to get a fresh slate? Indeed. Now you can't enter nothing because, well, it's nothing. So if we go over here, we find a Excuse me, I just glitched a bank reset switch. If we push this, the selected bank is zeroed. So if we go through the whole thing, this, that's out. Top one, that's out. And now bank in binary two is out. And thus, we are back to where we started. Fantastic. 
And we don't even have to worry about what the inputs say because they don't get uh, passed on to the storage system unless the storage button is pushed. Correct. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good example of how to use the fancy little gizmo. Uh, in the next video well, that we'll be doing, uh, we'll, we'll show you some of the more uh, details of how this thing works. And keep in mind, this is a first draft. It will be needlessly complicated. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.